baby. It's Tommy D, your boy, the nonprofit sector connector. I'm coming to you from the top of my house, two flights up from where I get my coffee. That's right, the kitchen. I'm in the attic. I'm in the attic. Philanthropy and Focus. That is the name of the program. Tommy D, that is the name of me. <laughs> I'm Tommy D. And I love and support and have an incredible passion for the work done by the nonprofit sector. And I got to be honest, you know, these home games are even more fun. And I don't mean the fact that I'm in the top of my house, just below the roof, that sort of home game. But I mean, when, when I'm talking Long Island strong, strong island, even if I will, if you'll, if you'll allow me a little strong island activity. You know, the big thing for me is I have great friends. I have great connections in the nonprofit sector. And I'm just looking to be a servant leader to these organizations. And that's really what this program is for me, both here on Long Island. And certainly I've had folks from around the country come on the show. I think I've actually had... Uh, some folks from an international perspective at one point. We'll get into I'll, I'll go back into my memory banks. But today, it's sort of a home game. And I look at my guest here from Harmony Healthcare, Long Island, David Nemiroff, and I look behind him and he's got an Islanders jersey up on the wall. You know, so shout out to the Isles. I mean, you know, look, I grew up in the era. David, good morning. I'm going to get off track while I'm doing an introduction. Let me say good morning. And how are you, sir? Good morning, Tommy. Thanks for having me. I'm glad to have you. I remember being like, so I was born in 78. So I remember like, um, watching my dad and my grandfather with Mike Bossy and stuff like that, you know, back in the heyday of the aisles. I mean, back then, if I remember, they didn't even wear like face masks on the helmets. Like, the, you know, somebody's got like real men, you know, on, on the ice. Not to say the guys on the ice aren't real tough guys right now, but just everything's involved. I even remember on a, on a tangent, because we'll go there a lot today. But my grandfather, my mom's father, who used to watch the hockey games with my dad, um, played semi-pro football. And the, these guys like had like a leather hat on, like that was it. Like, whereas we watch, you know, what goes on in football these days and, you know, and these guys still get hurt. It's, it's, it's a tough game. I can't imagine, but things evolve and I guess safety evolves. And, and, uh, but I, I know we talked a little bit about the Isles the other day. I don't, did we talk about baseball? I see the orange and blue of the Islanders. Are you, where, where do you go there? It, I'm also, I'm a Yankee fan. You are a Yankee fan. Islanders, yeah. Yankees. You don't see that necessarily all the time. That's, mm -hmm. that's, that's a different one. So, all right. Very, very good. So I am a Met fan. Yes. Let's go Met. Okay. So it's cool. Yeah. It's cool. We, we will, uh, we'll talk about that when, you know, when we grab some real coffee instead of just this virtual coffee we're going to do today. So yeah, let me go back to the introduction. I took a break from the introduction. That's how we do it here on the show. Whatever happens is what is the way it's supposed to be. Look, if it wasn't for the connections I have, the relationships I have, then I don't even have guests. And if it wasn't for my friend, Amy Fleischer, always looking out for me, who's the director of development here at Harmony Healthcare. Uh, I don't meet David. And then who knows what happens? You know, it's all about the people we know, which leads me to one other thing I want to shout out. If you are in New York or near Long Island uh, on the third, a couple of weeks from today on a Friday morning, I'm going to be doing a panel discussion out at Viscardi with five leaders of nonprofit organizations, TommyD.NYC on the Instagram and Tommy D at Philanthropy and Focus dot com on email um if you want to just get with me and learn more about that i don't want to talk too much about it now because we got a lot to get into today we do a couple things on this program each week we help these nonprofit leaders tell their story and as i like to say amplify their message you guys don't know but i always wanted to be a game show host so i'm on my way there i actually have a couple of ideas for a game show but we'll we'll come back to that maybe second quarter um, so not quarter of the day, but I mean quarter of the year, gang. We'll come back to that. So, David, look, I am just really happy that there are organizations, specifically org organizations like yours, Harmony Healthcare, formerly, correct me if I'm wrong, Long Island FQHC, Federally Qualified Health Center, um, that, that there are organizations that are serving those in most need, specifically when we talk about healthcare. I mean, I, I'm in the employee benefits business. That is to say, my partners and I own a firm, Vanguard Benefits. We're having conversations about healthcare. The, the rates of health insurance just continue to go up. Um, that's another conversation for another day. But really, it's organizations like yours that are serving those in most need. And that's really what I want to get into today. But even before we do that, I'm going to read a little bit about your background, and then I really want you to tell me your story. But you um, started out, as we were talking earlier, in my virtual green room here in the attic with United Cerebral Palsy Association of, of Suffolk County um, as a staff psychotherapist, also certified field instructor for both social work and mental health counselor students, um, free family residence and essential enterprises, 
I know Robert Budd. He's been on the show. He's a friend. Robert, if you're listening, hey, what's up, man? Um, you know, Nassau, Queens, performing provider system, working with 8,000 providers to transform healthcare of almost half a million Long Islanders, uh, and as well as the Mental Health Association of Nassau County as the ED, the executive director there. I don't know if it's ironic or if it's just the universe, but we just secured Jeff McQueen, current executive director of Mental Health Association of Nassau County for next Friday. So it's That's just awesome. it's just how it works. That's, again, through a connection from my friend MJ Padone. If it wasn't for me and MJ knowing each other through another organization in New York City, that doesn't get, I don't get to Jeff. And it's kind of one of these funny things because I don't know, Jeff, we've never met yet. Just some emails at this point. And the interesting thing to me is he's on the island. I'm on the island. I'm all, but you and I never met. So again, it goes to all this stuff is about relationships and connecting without any further me just ranting about the importance of connecting because gang, that's what I do. I'm the nonprofit sector connector without any more of that for now, at least in this segment, let's get into the program. David, as the leader of this organization, I want to know from you, certainly we're going to talk about programs and impact what the organization does. And ultimately, like I always say, how can we help through connections or otherwise? I want to know what drew you to this work, not necessarily nonprofit work, but service work, you know, as a, as a psychotherapist, as somebody, as a licensed clinical social worker, talk to me about all of that. Like, and, and you kind of said, did you tell me you were born into this work? I, I was born into this work. So what does that mean? Uh, so what does that mean is both my parents are social workers. Both my parents, uh, when I was born, were living upstate New York and they were uh, house parents for 14 mentally ill girls in uh, in a group home. And I was born into that facility as a, a child and uh, had 14 mentally ill sisters. Uh, not even, so not as a joke, you were literally born into the this environment. Oh my Correct, God. yeah. So both uh, my folks were young and, and you know, want to save the world. And and so they were uh, house parents. And then, you know, we, uh, I think I was born up in Corning, New York, and then moved down uh, to Long Island uh, at a young age. And so I've been in the, you know, helping service field my entire life. Uh, and uh, my folks are both uh, psychoanalysts. They're, they're therapists. They didn't work in the nonprofit sector right. uh, after that. But uh, so, yeah, I was literally born into the, the field. Are your parents still living? Are they still with us? They're still living. And uh, my mother's still practicing. My dad is retired. Wow. That's awesome. That That is so cool. So was it the sort of thing where that experience, you know, just to kind of on, on a similar, although certainly very different, I, I feel like we've, evolved as a society both in our conversation at least in the last handful of years around mental health specifically but if i go back you know we have a family foundation in memory of my in memory of my cousin linda um called the lindy lou foundation and linda passed away linda had uh, what we used to call special needs and other words before that but intellectual developmental disabilities um and you know when we I, I realized that having linda in my life and as my cousin and almost like you know we were very close, our families. Um, having Linda, we we operated differently as my brother and sister and I did and, and all of my cousins. We just, you know, it, it was, you know, Linda would have been 40, my same age as my brother, 41, 42, right? Passed about 10 years ago. And having Linda with us always made us mindful of how other people were. And we needed to be thoughtful about the way we loved and cared and were compassionate for people and i feel like as a society i sit on the state board for best buddies i'm involved with spirit of huntington art center out on long island horse ability a number of organizations that are involved in serving in individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities as you may know idd but i always like to spell out the acronyms everybody um i think as a society we're becoming more aware and i guess the word is i guess it's accepting Although it's, I think it should be like a baseline. Of course, we accept, but I feel like in the mental health space, it's even it's equally as important to have these conversations. You grew up in that environment with fourteen mm -hmm. sisters, with as you say, with different mental health issues, right? Um, that had to be a heck of a ride, just to just to, to be in that in that paradigm, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I was very young when it occurred before my folks, you know, moved back here, uh, you know, still in the single digits when we moved back to uh, Long Island and North America. But yeah, I mean, my whole career has been around mental health, helping nonprofits uh, when I was at the Mental Health Association, really advocating for people with mental illness, because typically in today's day and age, and it was probably worse with COVID, 
folks with mental illness died 25 years earlier than the general population. 25 years? 25 years. And typically because their mental health issues, you know, kind of overshadow their medical issues. So folks always, um, you know, poo-poo it to mental health issues and don't- They don't address- they, they, don't address. they don't address the underlying medical issues. And, and also a lot of the medications and things can, can sometimes be, be a challenge. But so that's, I'm sure Jeff will talk to you about that next week. I know that's my passion. Um, but, you know, taking care of individuals and, and the Harmony Healthcare just allows me to have a much larger platform. And yeah. it allows us to have a greater impact for folks. So uh, not only mental health, but, but physical health and those under, underinsured and uninsured. Did you always think that you would sort of elevate through the ranks to to the sea level of an organization? I mean, because again, and when you do that, again, pros and cons, to everything, every choice we make. What what's you know? I remember the Ben Franklin clothes, like as an old sales guy. Like, what's it on the left side, the right side? Like, um, I guess it's obvious that you get less clinical type interaction with with people you serve when you're doing other things. You have different responsibilities. So did you always see yourself like, you know, at the, at the top of the food chain, as they say? You know, not, not in the beginning, you know, I was still, you know, as a younger, you know, therapist trying to figure it out, following kind of a little of my parents' footsteps while I figured it out, yeah. you know, went to grad school right after uh, undergrad, um, was doing some training in uh, modern psychoanalysis. And, you know, and then I enjoyed the impact that administration had because um, where you're doing either group or individual therapy is one-on-one or a few, but then you can make a larger impact with when you're dealing with, uh, administrative roles. And so I kind of grew into that uh, and, and enjoyed that. And that, uh, you know, uh, when I was a free, huge amount of training, uh, I joke with Robert that you probably had more training than Harvard Business School at that organization. That right. And, and amazing. Oh, it was amazing. And and I owe a lot to uh, then CEO Barbara Townsend and Robert Budd uh, for, for, you know, helping to grow and having the opportunity to, to uh, lead the Mental Health Association was remarkable and something I was honored uh, and privileged to do. Uh, and then when uh, the opportunity came up here, um, you know, I thought this organization was like the coolest thing in the world. And uh, I just like, we really could take care of people, regardless if they have insurance, it doesn't really matter. And so uh, I, my path here was, I was originally on the board and then um, left the Mental Health Association to kind of work on behavioral health here. And uh, I wasn't planning to be the uh, executive director and it just worked out happenstance. Uh, you know, about six months later, I was asked to, to take on that leadership role. Uh, here and then uh, we haven't looked back and, and we've been doing a great amazing amount of work since i love it all right so i want to talk about we're going to take a quick break but i want to talk about when we come back what you just said there because I, I i get like cranky sometimes believe it or not you know like i get a little cranky and I, one of the things that makes me cranky is the fact that people don't have access and and in this country i look i think the whole planet we need a lot of work we got a lot of stuff to do but I, what drives me bananas, even let's just say about this Long Island thing, like you and I talked about this right before we started the show, you know, the the diversity of resources on Long Island and the and the um, I guess the density of the population and how close we are to the haves and the have nots. So for, for those of you all who are listening on some other part of the world and not this Long Island, I will tell you this, you can walk in from a neighborhood that has plenty of resources and big, big homes, and you take four steps into a neighborhood that is in very challenging, destitute times. And that is that, like, you know, there's many pockets of Long Island that are like that. And when we think about the socioeconomic situation here and, and here and everywhere, really, it, I'm going to say it, I don't usually curse on the show, but it starts to really piss me off about how we handle these things. So the fact that you just said, wait a minute, you mean these people need treatment? And I can bring them treatment irrelevant if, if they have a, a card with a copay on it that we're giving people service. I mean, that to me, look, yes, I understand the capitalist society to some extent that we live in, right? The system, I understand it. But what I don't understand is why is that the way we do it? Because that doesn't make sense. I understand that's a, the mechanism we're in. But the point of the matter is people need help. People need services. I don't really, you know, somebody comes and asks for something, you help them out. That's what we do. So anyway, I can't solve business problems. This is not the Harvard Business School either. <laughs> but I, I want to hear more about that because that is helping people on the front lines and helping them with the services they need. But I think, and, and I'm I'm venturing a guess, we'll talk about this when we come back, but it's really you take a holistic view of what the person needs. Back to your point about, you know, 25-year uh shorter lifespan for people with mental health issues or mental illness and 
because they're not underlying or they're not addressing those underlying needs. So when we come back into that, we got a lot to cover today. I want to go programs. I mean, there's 10 locations around the island, three school-based centers. You're serving 44,000 individuals just here in Nassau County alone each year. I mean, it's an incredible impact. And you know what? It's always funny to me when people go, especially my nonprofit friends, they go, yeah, we're like the best kept secret, but we don't want to be. You know, it's one of these stories. So that's kind of what this show is about. So I figure this, if I do the show once a week, David, I got 50 years left. There's 2,500 episodes. I think I got to do it more than once a week. We will be right back. This is Philanthropy and Focus, David Nemiroff and Tommy D. Are you a business owner? Do you want to be a business owner? Do you work with business owners? Hi, I'm Stephen Fry, your small and medium-sized business or SMB guy. And I'm the host of the new show, Always Friday. While I love to have fun on my show, we take those Friday feelings of freedom and clarity to discuss popular topics on the minds of SMBs today. Please join me and my various special guests on Friday at 11 a.m. on talkradio.nyc. Are you a conscious co-creator? Are you on a quest to raise your vibration and your consciousness? I'm Sam Leibowitz, your Conscious Consultant, and on my show, The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, we will touch upon all these topics and more. Listen live at our new time on Thursdays at 12 noon Eastern Time. That's The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, Thursdays, 12 noon on talkradio.nyc. Are you on edge? Hey, we live in challenging, edgy times, so let's lean in. I'm Sandra Bargeman, the host of The Edge of Every Day, which airs each Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time on talkradio.nyc. Tune in live with me and my friends and colleagues as we share stories and perspectives about pushing boundaries and exploring our rough edges. That's The Edge of Every Day on Mondays at 7 p.m. Eastern Time on talkradio.nyc. You're listening to Talk Radio NYC. Uplift, educate, empower. Nonprofits need connections to move in good directions. So cut through all the static. Tommy in his attic. That is a request. That is a call to action. Join me virtually in my attic every single Friday morning at 10 a.m. Eastern time so we can get with another leader of a special nonprofit. You know what I say, gang? <laughs> no big deal. Just changing the world. And I say that tongue in cheek because it is a big freaking deal what these organizations do. And I had my buddy Ken Serini on a little show we call the In Focus Nonprofit Show last week. And you know, I get more and more bold as the days go by. And I, I remember doing this show early days of doing this show. And I would be like, yeah, well, you know, if, if it wasn't for the nonprofit sector, you know, and I wouldn't call out the government. But you know what? I am going to call it out because you know what? If it, the nonprofit sector is the is the place where things get solved, it's on the front lines in Main Street, bringing medical care, bringing uh, mental health services, bringing food to those who have food insecurity on the front lines making the changes and ken and i were kind of talking about it last week and in fact david if i'm not mistaken you plugged into that show and just to say what am i in for i gotta go on the show with tommy d next week what is that gonna be about so you heard like the first nine minutes was us chatting about music on that show you know ken and i so that stuff to me i want to just call out a couple things about the organization we provide care regardless of the ability to pay and offer a sliding fee scale for over 27 percent of patients who are uninsured and in need of health care we operate a woman infant and children's supplemental nutrition program the acronym there being WIC W-I-C and a help home health care management for chronically ill adults and children I'm not going to ask you to get up on my soapbox there's not a lot of room on it but I'm not going to ask you to get up here and just complain like I do about the way things are what I really want to more say is how an organization like yours addresses these needs so let's go there let's talk about the scope of this organization these 10 locations and then three school-based et cetera et cetera like what does all that look like so we understand 
Well, thank you again. Thank you for the opportunity, uh, Tommy, to just even have the conversation to get the word out. We don't want to be the best kept, kept secret out there. Um, but unfortunately here, uh, we live in Nassau County, very wealthy county in uh, uh, New York, and uh, we have a chunk of folks, 65% of our patients live below the federal poverty level. Um, as you said, a good chunk of folks live or have uh, are uninsured, but about 50% of our folks have Medicaid and say another 12 or 13% are insured by Medicare. So about 85% of our patients have some kind of either uninsured or government uh, assistance health insurance. And what I love about the organization is that, as you said, we, we help regardless of the ability to pay. So if you come to some of our locations, it's a regular doctor's office. So you'll see if you need a pediatrician, we have pediatricians. If you need a GYN, we have GYNs or, or uh, OBs. We have dentists on site. We have psychiatry. We have social workers. We have internal medicine docs for, for adult medicine, nutritionists here, uh, podiatry. So we have a lot of, we kind of wrap services around an individual to help them with their primary care needs. It's kind of what a federally qualified health center was designed to be. Uh, in New York, almost uh, 2.3 million people are served in organizations like us. And around the country, about 30 million Americans are served in uh, federally qualified health centers. 30 so, million Americans. That's 30 million Americans are served by uh, federally qualified health centers throughout this country. And so uh, we are the backbone, the safety net for healthcare when it comes to serving some of the most underserved uh, folks uh, here. We actually serve a much, much higher percentage of uninsured patients. Um, and where New York State maybe is in the you know five to eight percent range, we're, you know, as you said, 25 to 27 percent of our patients are uninsured. And we don't ask about documentation status, but there's a possibility that some folks are undocumented um, in that. We skew younger too, organizationally. We uh, you know, have folks who are, I think, 65 percent women, but we're mostly, you know, in that uh, I'd say 25 to 55 age range is a majority of the people that we serve. And um, we're about prevention and, and health outcomes. And I joke with others that I put our health outcomes up against larger healthcare systems here on Long Island. I think we do an amazing job. We're patient-centered medical home certified. And that's a special certification given for the National Center for Quality Assurance. Let me our stop you there because I want to I want to underscore that because I'm not familiar with that. So patient, can you just run us through patient that? Patient-centered medical home. So that means we're that medical home for you. And the way in which we interact with you, there's an, uh, an organization, the National Center for Quality Assurance, that puts out national standards on healthcare. And you have to comply, and it used to be every three years, now it's every year, to meet standards of care and how you care for a population. Uh, with team-based care, making sure that not only when the patient calls uh, at our front desk or call center, but the medical assistant is working, the nurse, the doctor, that care management, we're wrapping around services to an individual and really working with them. We have a full electronic medical record that's uh, electronic portal. So if you need to text your doctor, you can. And we roll out new technology every day to help connect with our patients. We try to remove those obstacles. Uh, we went from zero telehealth to about 35,000, 40,000 telehealth visits pretty much overnight. Um, we advocated for people to get COVID tests because in the beginning when COVID broke out, not a lot of our folks were able to drive to Jones Beach or, or other mass testing facilities. So we worked with the county to put up tents right outside the health centers yeah. in four locations. You could just walk in. And so folks who don't have access to to uh, transportation or public transportation could have just come to us. And we did that actually with Island Harvest where we give out food. We tested you and positive and gave out food at the same time. I love that. So let's let's stay. Well, now, now there's like four things I want to talk about what you just said. The first thing is, look, I, I get on my high horse and I say that the government can't do these things. I say the deal of it is we need that partnership though, right? We need the, the front lines, the ones who do the work are our nonprofits. Listen, if you live anywhere on Long Island, you live near the railroad. So you're probably hearing the railroad. There it is. That's the train coming right by. You know, I feel like Johnny Cash. I hear the train are coming. It's rolling. I'm sorry, David. I tried not to sing today, but it's <laughs> happening. It's rolling around the bend. All right. So Nassau County, we appreciate the support. We need those those partnerships. So I don't want to beat up on everybody, but I think the the part, part I always get to is it's the implementation. And it's those organizations like yours that are doing the implementation that are that are proving this stuff and, and that are interacting with the public, right? So yeah. we need those partnerships. We need the county support. Um, the other thing I want to bring up is what you said about Island Harvest. So Nothing excites me around nonprofit more than when I hear the, the collaboration of the sector, you know, the collaboration of, hey, look, we know the population we're serving. These people don't have transportation or access to to get to Jones Beach, as your example. So they're going to come to one of our centers. Well, let's have a bag of food. 
Let's have some produce. Let's have some healthy food. It goes again, in my mind, to serving the whole person, right? right? Not just this transactional nature of pop by, get your COVID test and, and you know, get get on the, the train or the bus and go back where to your home. But let's, what do you need? How can we yeah, Tom, help? We take, we take care of everybody. So we, we look and we screen everybody with what we call social determinants of health. Yes. So what that is, is if you look at really the paradigm or the circle of pie of, of health care and the costs, maybe we're, we're as primary care, 11% of that cost, but social care, where you live, how you uh, have a job, uh, what you eat, that's like 50% almost of the cost of care. Because if you're homeless, who really cares about your hemoglobin A1C or your blood pressure, right? You just want a roof over your head and some food. And so we know we it takes a village. That's my latest name. We're only going to be successful as an organization if we work with others to take care of the folks we work with. We venture out more with new programs to try to remove those obstacles. We were fortunate enough to get a 40-foot RV uh, awarded to us by New York State uh, last year. And so that RV has now got two medical exam rooms, and it goes out. So we go to, we just, we're starting, I think, next week or the week after at the end where we'll go to them. And they're mostly, a, you know, a soup kitchen, but, but yeah. they'll work with homeless individuals and we'll provide medical care. So, so hold on. So, so hold on. So so first of all, I, I'm a visual guy. So I see this RV. So that's so cool. So I I want to I want to figure out like so, you know, who <laughs> I get too many ideas in my head. Yolanda Rubano Gross, if you're listening, I love you. So here, Yolanda runs options for community living. She's one of my friends who's going to be on the panel discussion at Viscardi later, in, you know, on, on March 3rd. Um, she had talked about having an RV type thing to deliver services. And they have a location over in Hempstead. So maybe there's, if you're not, if you don't know Yolanda already, but I, I think you probably do. Yeah. But uh, um, there's this cool collaboration. The fact that you are able to take care to the people, talk about social determinants of health. You're in, look, you know, especially folks who again i don't understand this to be honest with you that folks live on the street i don't i don't i i i, I mean i understand what's ha what it is but i don't understand how that is a thing on this planet that that's okay that we're allowing that so i i try to digress and pull back and be you know leave my opinion somewhere else but but this is my show so i guess they come with it so so the thing about it david is you're in the community tell me about that like the rv what is that What's the look so, and feel like? What's the impact? Like, how does that tell me about that? So the RV is a 40 foot uh, RV that's got a, a, a medical assistant driver and a nurse practitioner on the uh, on the bus. It is um, handicap accessible. So it's got a, actually a wheelchair lift if somebody's in a wheelchair. Provides preventative care. We right now co-locate with uh, Central National Guidance, a mental health organization, where we bring primary care to them, uh, literally park it in their parking lot. Uh, we're working on partnerships with, uh, as I said, the inn will launch uh, shortly. Uh, we'll bring it to events to do vaccine drives. We're going to uh, have one on March 1st at the Elmont High School, and we'll bring it there to work. And that's actually in conjunction with the federal government and the, the town of Hempstead. So that'll be a great event where uh, from 3.30 to 6.30, we'll be vaccinating people with COVID boosters, having a health fair. The RV will be there so folks can come this out. Is, this is this is the one we were talking about, you and me and Amy, the other day, right? Yes, yes, so yes. Because so so the... Amy sent me the flyers. Amy, I promise I'm going to get this out there. I'll, I'm going to be there that day. I decided I'm, I'm coming through. I don't know what you need me to do. I'm I'm not clinical, so I can't really do much like that. But if you need me to carry boxes and stuff and, and things like that, I'm happy to do. Come say hi. Come say hi. <laughs> uh, you know, we're going to have a whole bunch of different vendors there, giveaways. But um, the RV will be, you know, out there to, to help us do some of those um, just vaccine boosters that people are interested. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But we use it really to, to, you know, remove those barriers. The goal is also bring it to homeless shelters where folks yeah. can't get to. Um, I know other organizations have mental health RVs, and maybe we'll co-locate and park with them to, to hit and do the mental health and primary care. So the goal is really about access and how we improve access and remove barriers. And that was just one tool. We're fortunate enough to get a grant uh, because, again, um, half our funding comes from grants. So we mm -hmm. need that to, to sustain the operations. Yeah, I, I don't know. Um, I mean, do you do you see the the demand for an additional RV? Like, is that a, like, could you, you know, once like, this is a pretty, it's a new program with the RV. Yeah. So, yeah. The RV just launched, uh, you know, uh, last summer, it is a very expensive program to run. Um, so, and it's, it's a, it's great to, to break down barriers. Uh, right now we have more than enough need in our health center. So the RV kind of helps to get to places. Uh, yeah. So we're trying to, we're building a new health center in Hempstead that'll open, uh, you know, in this fall. So we, three times the size of our existing one. So, there's a huge amount of need, and that's just another way to, to help to, you know, with that need and that access.
It's so great. And again, gang, listen, if you're not paying attention to what I'm doing here every single week is I'm trying to show you that nonprofits are on the front lines changing the freaking world. Like that's it. Like that's what this is about. And as a, as a shout out to, to just talk about shining a spotlight, we're going to go to break in a second, but I have up on one of my monitors, I have the website called imagineawardsli.com. You all might have heard me talk about the Long Island Imagine Awards and the New York City Imagine Awards. By the way, New York City Imagine Awards applications are out right now. I'm on the committee for both LI, Long Island, and New York City. But as I look at this, Mr. Nemiroff, as I as I look over here, it's the Beth Page Federal Credit Union Diversity, Equity, Inclusion, and Accessibility Award. And I see one Harmony Healthcare Long Island is a finalist in that category. Now, this is a new category. Maybe we'll talk a little bit about the Imagine Awards, but I, what we'll talk about is the Diversity, Equity, Inclusion, and Accessibility Award. So let's talk about that a little bit when we come back. But shout out to the Imagine Awards. Shout out to somebody who I look up to because he's a little taller than me, Ken Serini, but I also look up to him because he's my friend and he's changing the world. We're going to take a break and then we'll come back and change the world. Tommy D, Philanthropy and Focus, right back. Are you passionate about the conversation around racism? Hi, I'm Reverend Dr. TLC, host of the Dismantle Racism Show, which airs every Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern on talkradio.nyc. Join me and my amazing guests as we discuss ways to uncover, dismantle, and eradicate racism. That's Thursdays at 11 o'clock a.m. on talkradio.nyc. In a post-COVID world, you may have many unanswered questions regarding your health. Are you looking to live a healthier lifestyle? Do you have a desire to learn more about mental health and enhance your quality of life? Or do you just want to participate in self-understanding and awareness? I'm Frank R. Harrison, host of Frank About Health, and each Thursday, I will tackle these questions and work to enlighten you. Tune in every Thursday at 5 p.m. on talkradio.nyc, and I will be Frank About Health to advocate for all of us. Hey everybody, it's Tommy D, the nonprofit sector connector coming at you from my attic. Each week here on talkradio.nyc, I host a program, Philanthropy in Focus. Nonprofits impact us each and every day, and it's my focus to help them amplify their message and tell their story. Listen each week at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time until 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on talkradio.nyc. You're listening to Talk Radio NYC at www.talkradio.nyc. Now broadcasting 24 hours a day. Nonprofits need connections to move in good directions. So cut through all the static. Join Tommy in his attic. All right, we're back. We're back. You know, um, right before the break, I mentioned the Long Island Imagine Awards, and I don't know how many years I've been involved with the Imagine Awards. Our firm, Vanguard Benefits, has been a platinum sponsor at the Imagine Awards for the last number of years, and uh, you know, certainly ingrained in, in the DNA of what I do is, is shining the light on on the sector, or as we call it, the sector. You know, uh, I want to talk a little bit, if you could, David, about just that award that, you know, talk about, so last year, um, I took some coursework with the Institute for Nonprofit Practice. And one of the major reasons I had done that was uh, some of the, much of the conversation rather was around diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. And, um, you know, diversity comes in so many ways, you know, um, not just racial, but um, ability, you know, different uh, mental health issues, right? That we, you know, a lot of what I talk about in my other nonprofit work is around vocational work. And I say, you know, like when, when individuals with intellectual developmental disabilities, best buddies, best buddies, jobs, programs, spirit of hunting, and artworks, things like that. Um, and, and I've, that's in, on the vocational side, but it's much more than that. The, the equity, the inclusion, the accessibility. So can you talk a little bit, I, two things I want to talk to you about. That angle with, with inside your organization, both internally and, and then also like externally, as far as diversity equity goes. Sure. Uh, yeah. And then also, so, I don't want to go into the mental health conversation with what I texted you in the chat a little bit about that yeah. after too. So let's go there. By all means. So, so for uh, the diversity equity inclusion piece, so, so we really try to, you know, mimic the staff we have on board 
employees try to mimic the population we serve. Um, so I, I think, I, you know, I told you we're, we're probably 65% um, women we serve. We're about 85% women who are employed. Uh, a lot of our employees come from the communities we serve. Uh, I think 63% of our uh, patients would be preferred to be spoken to in a language other than English. Mm -hmm. Most of the people we hire now are bilingual. Uh, my entire executive team is all women uh, uh, from diversified uh, communities. Uh, most of our employees are minorities. Um, and uh, they're, uh, you know, they take care of the people that look like them and feel like them. And it's really a, a lot easier for some folks to come in. Actually, we did the demographic lineup, and I think we're like dead on with African American employees to patients in terms of demographic, almost dead on for uh, people with Hispanic background to employees, you know, almost white uh, folks. So we try to um, match up as best we can folks from the community for the community. Uh, if you speak English, Spanish, and I'd say Haitian Creole, you'll cover 98% of the patients we uh, work with. And to base on Health Center, we try to hire for folks who because that's a predominant community, you know, has maybe somebody more Hispanic in that community or African American in this community. We try to match up as best we can uh, employees to the community to serve, but we're open for anybody. We're not going to limit um, because of race, gender, or any identity. Um, and so we serve everybody. Uh, I learned the other day we serve a whole bunch of veterans as, as, as well. But um, the goal for us is to be open and accessible and for people to feel comfortable. So a lot of training goes into emotional intelligence for our employees yeah. and really how to, to, to cope with some challenges. A lot of folks, and you mentioned it before, you know, just about the dynamics of Long Island, where you can walk down the block from a garden city to Hempstead and over the train tracks yeah. to have very, very different living experiences. So if you want to add into the mental health piece of that, a lot of our folks have not only seriously and persistent mental illness that you'll talk to Jeff about, but they have, you know, socioeconomic trauma. So a lot of trauma uh, issues with our folks um, in the schools. We're finding a lot of kids then we anywhere from vaping to, to new substances. Uh, you've heard about we know about the explosion of substance uh, abuse uh, yep. here in Long Island. Um, I'm challenged by the, the legalization of marijuana because it just gives our kids and, and, and folks another opportunity to self-medicate. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we're trying to help folks deal and cope with that. Uh, and so the co-location of primary care and behavioral health. Is something I personally try to focus on because, again, I don't want people dying if they don't have to. We want to give them the resources where they can. And, and the, the pandemic opened up telehealth for us, which was great. So it's another way to connect. Um, but And we were also able to bring on some new prescribers to, to help as well. But it's a long road. Uh, unfortunately, we have seen the spike in opioid uh, use. Not as much in some of our communities as in others, uh, surprisingly. But I will tell you the substance of marijuana, alcohol, uh, we're there before, they're there today, they're not changing too much. Uh, and that's the stuff that we we focus on more because that's more of what our patients are seeing. Uh, we definitely uh, screen for substance abuse and mental health issues. But if we can wrap around our services, and if we don't have it, a partner, that's how we've done good work. And that's how we've really supported our mission and the vision of the board and, and the organization. Thank you for all that. And look, you know, we are in crisis from uh, from the drug challenges in this country. I mean, having, I'm, I'm raising four children um, and it's a scary time, man. It really is. And, you know, you, you're, you, we must have these conversations. Um, and uh, I'm appreciative that it's on the forefront. And uh, again, people are in pain. That's, you know, not to, not to um, diminish mental health illness men, or mental health issues or mental illness um but people are in pain because of the way the world is right now and and you know i i haven't so i share on the show so most people who are listening know i i quit drinking about 12 years ago um and uh, that was an important thing <clears throat> excuse me it's an important step in my life and and certainly changed the trajectory of a lot of things i had going on and uh but i think in terms of when we're in pain and we're hurting, we look for to, to be out of pain, you know? And, and if you talk about the mental health issues and you talk about challenges, uh, socioeconomic challenges for sure, you know, then people are looking for an outlet. So we need to support these people in different ways. And the second ever episode of this program was my friend, Dr. Larry Grubler. Um, it seems like little by little, I'm going to call out everybody on next week, next month's panel discussion, Dr. Larry Grubler from Transitional Services for New York, serving 4,000 individuals uh, with mental illness in New York City each year. And um, he said, you know, Tommy, we we all need support at different times. And I think that's what we need to remember is the compassion and the empathy and the support and love for each other 
is what we do is what we need to do so um to the to this the, to this word that scares the hell out of me this fentanyl i don't even understand what it's all about it, it's scary as hell um but these are this is real life stuff david you're on the front lines dealing with real people who have real issues and real challenges and and um you know I, i'll just kind of leave it there for, because these are important dialogues that we need to continue having a couple months ago the hia had an event here in long island where they had um uh, four executive leaders <clears throat> from nonprofits, and they were talking about the mental health issues and the, and the fact that, you know, I, I don't know if the right word is silver lining, but certainly COVID and a lot of things in, in the world right now have shined the light on this thing. This stigma, there's been this stigma around the mental health conversation forever, right? Why ever yeah. it was there, it, it has been there. And I believe having, you know, I've been involved with TSINY for about 10 years. I believe that we're we're opening this conversation man we're having the dialogue and you know it you know it's still in it's still covered up in a lot of ways but we're having this dialogue i mean would you agree and and as an employer this is where i'm going to bring you now as an employer you know being that we we're in benefits we're always talking about um eap plans and employee assistant mm -hmm. plans and we're talking about what type of mental health services this is the questions we get from employees and sure. employers what are my mental health services so you know I'd love to hear from your perspective as a leader of an organization, what is that, those conversations internally for your own staff, for your own people, oh. checking in and whatnot? We have them all the time. So let's hope first and foremost, our folks were traumatized by COVID like you or anybody else was. As a doctor, as a nurse, as a clerk, medical assistant, we couldn't work remotely. Um, people came in. We couldn't, you know, get on a Zoom, sit in our pajamas and, and do work. I came in and worked, I think, you know, three or four months straight every day of the week. And we're not a seven day a week shop. Right. And so the trauma that employees went through of, you know, they couldn't leave to go home and leave it at work because COVID was everywhere. So that definitely heightened uh, people's challenges. And we went through lots of challenges. We had started with, I think we had biweekly Zoom town halls just to fill people in. How are they doing? At one point, I hosted a few sessions with our EAP uh, program just for employees to deal with um, stress and anxiety and coping skills. So we would host free sessions on how to deal with depression and challenges at work so that way people could have access and, to, and offer the, the EAP services. We do that for free, I think for four or five sessions for folks that is anonymous. They don't have to, you know, it doesn't come back to us. And it's been a challenge where we once at one point, I think in 2021 said, all right, we're going to have, everybody's going to have two days off or something. We're going to give you a day off just a mental health day, just because people needed it. Um, we weren't gathering traditionally like we normally did for holiday parties and outings because yeah. people yeah. were isolated and people get strength from, from being with one another. And then when you're in a, a site, uh, at one point, you know, we have about 400 people uh, throughout the high, the beginning part of COVID, we had 90 folks out with COVID. And it was just scary. Um, it's like 25% uh, or 20, 25% yeah, you step out. And, and again, they came back, but I do remember early March having a, County executive come into a health center unmasked with a big press conference. One of probably her last in person, not yeah. indoors, with a COVID uh, patient in the isolation room, and the the, the trauma that that employees went through. It was uh, you know surreal. Uh, turnover was high. Doctors for the first time uh, quit uh, on us who were close to our time. Said, "I'm done." And we had never had that before. Well, it's scary, man. If we remember how scary it was, I mean, people, you know, it wasn't like. You get COVID, you're going to walk it off. They, we were scared, man. We didn't know anything, and we were. What happens? You, you get COVID, you end up on a ventilator, and you know, not not so good from there, right? That's well, what it, we right? we had lost patients. I had lost friends uh, locally uh, around my age. Really scary stuff. So uh, the trauma that it's still we're still in the recovery mode, and we're focusing a lot on uh, now staff engagement activities. What can we do to make it better uh, for them? And that's an ongoing process. We have a lot of things in the in the pipeline from the ropes course at Jones Beach to, yeah. to bowling nights to you name it, whatever we can do to help relieve some stress. I love that. I love that. Well, listen, I will tell you this. Amy Fleischer, I know you're listening. Um, Italian ices on me and my dad from Ralph's Ices in Huntington. We'll figure it out. I'll just come out. Maybe I'll just get, maybe I need that RV. We'll fill it up with Italian ices and I'll drive it around yeah. to all your locations and do Sounds that. That's great. I, I, I don't know about that. I like to make people smile and Italian ice usually does that. Hang out with me and, and Italian ice works out. We'll work that out if it's appropriate. When we come back, we're going to, I really want to go into, this is our last segment together, David, which is unbelievable. I know it goes fast. But yes. when we come back, I want to leave it all out on the field, as they say, or I keep looking at that jersey behind you. I want to leave it all out on the ice. 
So let's leave it all out there. Like, what do you need? How can we help? Who are the sure. relationships you want to connect with? Um, you know, if are there specific events? I want to call out that event we talked about it again in, in March on that Wednesday, and anything else that, uh, or, or is it is it this month? Uh, you'll tell me when we come back. We'll, you got we'll, tell, we'll get we'll hit the date on that. We'll hit the website and we'll make sure we uh, let folks know how to get in touch with you and the team if they need you. We will be right back. Philanthropy and Focus. Hey, everybody, it's Tommy D, the nonprofit sector connector coming at you from my attic. Each week here on talkradio.nyc, I host a program, Philanthropy and Focus. Nonprofits impact us each and every day, and it's my focus to help them amplify their message and tell their story. Listen each week at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time until 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on talkradio.nyc. In a post-COVID world, you may have many unanswered questions regarding your health. Are you looking to live a healthier lifestyle? Do you have a desire to learn more about mental health and enhance your quality of life? Or do you just want to participate in self-understanding and awareness? I'm Frank R. Harrison, host of Frank About Health, and each Thursday, I will tackle these questions and work to enlighten you. Tune in every Thursday at 5 p.m. on talkradio.nyc, and I will be Frank About Health to advocate for all of us. Are you a conscious co-creator? Are you on a quest to raise your vibration and your consciousness? I'm Sam Leibowitz, your conscious consultant. And on my show, The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, we will touch upon all these topics and more. Listen live at our new time on Thursdays at 12 noon Eastern Time. That's The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, Thursdays, 12 noon on talkradio.nyc. You're listening to Talk Radio NYC at www.talkradio.nyc. Now broadcasting 24 hours a day. Nonprofits need connections to move in good directions. So cut through all the static. Join Tommy in his attic. Join Tommy in his attic. Nick. I am going to be a crooner. I'm determined. Think uh, Sinatra, think Tony Bennett, think Harry Connick Jr., think Tommy D. I was actually telling my wife just earlier this morning, I said, I'm going to take some singing lessons. But I don't even know if I need singing lessons, David Nemiroff, because I have <laughs> I sing like a lark. Anyway, uh, there is a big Y-E-S on <laughs> Facebook from my friend Amy Fleischer. I think that's about the Italian ices, Amy. I think that's probably what it is. Um, yes, they're done. Just let's figure it out. I'll get a little court. I'll drive around Long Island. I'll bring out ices for the whole staff. I think that'll uh, make some folks smile for sure. Uh, if not, I'll just tell silly jokes and sing. And if they don't like the ices, then they'll maybe they'll like me. All right, listen, community health fair. Thank you, Amy, for sending this over to me again. Uh, Harmony Healthcare in partnership with the town of Hempstead, Supervisor Don Clavin, Councilman Thomas Muscarella, um, with Hope, Haitian, Haitians Americans United for Progress, which I know this organization for many, many years. Shout out to um, 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 Elsie St. Louis over at Hope. Should get you on the show, Elsie. We got to figure that out. Um, Wednesday, March 1st, 2023, from 3.30 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. at Elmont Memorial High School. I grew up very, very close there in Franklin Square, so I know the neighborhood pretty well. Uh, free vaccines, um, COVID-19 vaccine, boosters, flu, Tdap, pneumonia, shingles, health screenings, health education, workshops, community resources, health insurance information. So that's all going on. So that I wanted to point out. But Dave, let's get back into what you need to point out. Who can we connect you with? Who can we bring to the organization? What What do you need? Let's talk that. So we need a lot of different resources. I know one thing that Amy's working on for us right now is we're on a cool project called for baby boxes. I don't know if people realize this, but here in Nassau County, African-American women, unfortunately, are passing away at three times the rate of white women when it comes to childbirth. So we're looking to uh, purchase newborn baby boxes to give to all of our new moms. Uh, so we're looking to, to fundraise. I think the the goal is around $50,000 to support all those, those uh, new moms out there. And we've got some funding coming in from donors as we speak. But simple thing is we're looking and, and uh, Amy has connected us to, to other folks who have access to diapers and all kinds of things. But in Norway, they help drive down the maternal mortality of these baby boxes. So it's almost everything you need when you have a newborn. So we're looking at that. 
I love and, it. I got to sneak in here because I got to take a little sure, credit. Sure. I got to take a little credit because Amy, Amy sent me a text or an email or something. She's like, Tommy D, because that's what they call me. She said, Tommy D, uh, I need to meet Heather Edwards from the Allied Foundation. Mm -hmm. So I played a little bit of the old nonprofit sector connector, if you know what I'm saying, sir. Yes. But I, I tell you that to be a little self-serving, but I tell you more to, to shout out Heather Edwards, who ironically is one of the three of the five folks that's going to be on my panel discussion on the 3rd of, of March. So Heather Edwards, Allied Foundation, an incredible woman, an incredible organization, and really making such, such, uh, she makes light work of what is not light work at all. I mean, you know, just diapers and and wipes. And she was on the, the show um, a couple, maybe last month or whatever it was. And uh, we talked about the uh, they have a period poverty project going on right now. Tragically, you know, young women and girls uh, don't have access all the time to, to the needs that they have when they're experiencing a period. I mean, these are like basic things yes. we're talking about, gang. And again, this is Long Island, you know, that, 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 that people don't have these things that they need. Anyway, let's put that on the side. Baby boxes. What else, David? Baby, baby boxes is, is a biggie uh, for us. Again, that's uh, to help our upwards of 500 uh, new moms that we have every year. Uh, so that's a, a huge thing. Um, donations to help with the underserved. Uh, right now, we we do give out free medication to people who are uninsured because medication is expensive. So there's a program New York State has called 340, uh, federal government has, excuse me, called 340B. It lets us uh, save those discounts and give them to uninsured patients, but dollars for, for medication, simple thing is medication. Uh, you know, if, if you can't get a simple antibiotic or a, or a um, cholesterol drug, it's really, really hard to take care of your health. So we try to provide our patients with a discount drug card and we'll pay uh, the medication. So, you know, that's out of our pocket because we know it's the right thing to do. Um, we even uh, hooked up with a company called DocGo to send uh, an EMT to somebody's home if they're chronically ill because we want to check on them more frequently and they get some a telehealth visit back with their provider and it keeps them out of the hospital. And it's, it's on our dime because it's the right thing to do. It saves the system money because they're not frequenting a hospital and actually people get better, novel concept. Yeah, so, well, <laughs> that was not lost on me. That little sarcasm, sir. Novel no. concept. Somebody gets better, right? We make an yeah. impact. They feel better. They're healthy, right? God. Yeah. So, so dollars to do that work. Uh, and we'd love somebody just to sponsor a couple of these programs. And that would be amazing. Uh, working with, you know, Island Harvest for food uh, and uh, Long Island Cares. They're, they're great partners. Uh, that's a huge beneficial work. So wherever we can, even something as simple as, as uh Transportation. We were fortunate enough to get a ride uh, grant from Uber uh, okay. to LISC to do Uber rides this year. So we can get our patients to and from because they couldn't not always access public transportation here in Nassau. So so we used to pay Metro cards out of our own pocket just to get people to and from their doctor's appointments because that was impossible. Yeah. So it's the simple things, the hierarchy of, of needs, that Maslow thing. They We need the simple. We need food, clothing, and shelter and the access to, to care. So Dollars for us goes to these programs out of our own funds to support those who are most in need. Wow. An incredible stuff. And it, it makes me say this, Amy, I know you're listening, watching. So I will be there when you, if it's appropriate to pack those boxes, those baby boxes. I want to be part of it tomorrow. I'm going to be with my buddy Lonnie Sherman at General Needs. We're going to be packing uh, 200 bags for veterans with all their essentials. General Needs is a real special volunteer run organization here on Long Island. Uh, Lonnie and Susan Sherman, they and they just the whole volunteer. They, I mean, I've been I was with them. They have this they have this um, storage facility with like seven different storage units in there, wow. and it's like a it's like a store. Like, and they do such great work for nonprofits. Excuse me, for veterans, and it's run by volunteers. What does that mean, Tommy? Awesome. No one gets paid, gang. That's what I meant. No one gets paid. There's no payroll. There's no salary. It's just people doing good work. So, Amy, if appropriate, I want to be there to help put those boxes together. If we can, I'll bring a crew of people. We'll do that. Um, I, I, what do you want people to remember, David, anything else that we should leave with them with? How do they, I don't think we said the name of the website, although my friends, uh, my friend Mick Collins has certainly been sharing the website on Facebook, but the website is harmonyhealthcareli.org. Back to you, David. Yeah. So, so yes, if, if they could go donate to our site, you can see more about us. We've got uh, some rebranding, some new videos uh, that we put out there. Tommy, we give out over a million dollars worth of vaccines a year, just vaccines. These are these are vaccines that are not covered by the, the state's program for vaccines for children or for adults, just, you know, the normal vaccines to keep people healthy. Uh, and that costs us more than we bring in. Right. So that's because it's the right thing to do. And that's public health. That's what we we're here for. So that's just a, a million dollar drop in the bucket, which is a lot of money to help our fellow uh, neighbor. 
Um, you know, any support anybody can give us, we appreciate even a connection as you, you had with Ally, you said that was amazing. So if we get diapers, don't have to buy them, wonderful. If we can get other things for the baby box and not have to buy it, even better. Uh, Cause we've got these new moms. We've got a, a perinatal program who goes out and does community health work with those new moms. Yeah. So uh, we've got that great grant with Women's Diversity Network and Hofstra for the next five years where we're going to go to mom's houses and try to help put a dent in that maternal mortality because it's ridiculous. And it pisses me off at this point. So right on. Let's get pissed off. We're pissed off for greatness. That's what I always say. Pissed <laughs> off for greatness, David. It, it's not OK. You are correct. Uh, the, our communities were created through structural racism and, and redlining. Yep. And yep. we're here to kind of break those barriers and, and make a difference and and equality uh, is a big push that my chief medical officer, Dr. Tariqa James, talks about all the time. And so if we can make a dent and improve and, and help the people up. Uh, we even give out telehealth devices. So we'll give you remote blood pressure cuffs and things. And then you can share that with your provider for free. Uh, and we'll check on you and see if that helps uh, to manage your health care. Whatever we can do to make your life better, we're going to work towards it. Why would they do that, gang? Because it helps people. That's why they would give out free stuff. You know, this is not Best Buy giving out toys. This is they're making an impact and saving lives and changing lives. My God, too much to talk about. I'll make you a deal. Now I'm coming for a tour. You and me, yes. we'll go around. We'll do some video stuff. We'll, we'll check out the whole place. Um, I appreciate you. I appreciate our our budding friendship, David. We're we're now whether you like it or not, we're friends. That's how it operates. I love it, Tommy. You know, I'm, I'm like I'm hard to get rid of. I'm like gum on the bottom of your shoe. Hard to get rid of. <laughs> once you get me. All right. The show is called Philanthropy and Focus. I'm Tommy D. We are out of time. Next week on the show, Jeff McQueen will be here from the Mental Health Association of Nassau County. I did one faux pas. The other two folks on my panel, since we started playing that game, fill in the blanks. Dr. Chris Rosen from Viscardi, okay, the Viscardi Center, and Melinda Murray Nyack who's been on the program a couple weeks back. Uh, sudden cardiac arrest is not rare, gang. It is not rare, okay? Melinda lost her son at 17 on the court at Farmingdale State University. Uh, Dominic A. Murray, and um, she's out there changing the world. AEDs, CPR training, the whole thing. Sudden cardiac arrest is not rare. I'll leave it there. But those are the five that sort of rounds out that uh, that group that'll be there with me. David, I hope maybe if your schedule permits, you'll show up and visit with us that day because it'll be good for the connections. I know I, I'll twist Amy's arm to get her there as well. But listen, make it a great day, everybody. I appreciate you all plugging in. And do me a favor. Be grateful for everything you have. Wake up your day and live, use a little gratitude because you know what? Other people don't have what you have. Make it a great day. I'm Tommy D. I'll see you later. Thanks, David.